What's up everybody, this is DLL Cool J, and today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a simple elf runner. So basically this is just a very basic shellcode runner that I found with some uh, Stack Overflow help of course, and I will reference everything in the code itself along with the GitHub link. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at how do we extract a payload from a binary in Ghidra and then also a couple other things in Ghidra that can kind of just help us with our binary analysis and uh, navigation when we're doing reverse engineering. So, as I said all that, let's go ahead and first get a quick look at the code, simple elf runner. Naturally, I selected the wrong file. So here we see a couple links and then also a payload. We got a handful of bytes that we're gonna use here. This is generated from uh, MSF Venom, so nice little Metasploit uh, one-liners. And we see we have an M protect to change the memory uh, to be uh, read and execute after we uh, copy a payload over. And then also we do uh, kind of the similar void pointer stuff uh, if you're familiar with shellcode execution. If you're not, I will provide a link. But here we see with M protect, we're gonna go ahead and set the protection on a region of memory. So we're saying like, hey, after we copy that buffer on over, let's go ahead and, uh, or excuse me, not even copy it over, let's go ahead and make that uh, read and execute. And then here, uh, we go ahead and set it up a nice little pointer to the payload itself, and then we execute that pointer. So ignore that void pointer uh, comment that I had there that was from something else earlier. But your basic run-of-the-mill shell code runner. So we went ahead and generated this with MSF Venom, nice little one-liner here, nothing super fancy, and it's just going to call back the local host. Here we see we have 123 bytes for just a simple reverse uh, x86 uh, TCP shell. And we have a nice little hard to find source size of 123 because that's how many bytes this payload is. And now we're going to go ahead and just generate that. And naturally, I forgot the path. And we'll call it Evil Elf. And we're going to go ahead and open this up in Ghidra. So you can see I've been playing around with a couple of different ones. So the nice thing, once you load this project, it's going to go ahead and read some of the headers and try to figure out what it is by default. However, you can also specify, hey, let's treat this like a raw binary. You can specify the load address, the image base, etc. And then here, you get a nice little breakdown of uh, a handful of uh, kind of similar things like what Read Elf would provide you uh, to a certain degree. Of uh, hey, this is when uh, this project was created. This is the processor that we specified, the compiler we used, etc. And we're going to go ahead and click that awesome dragon button to open up one of the code browsers. And then we're going to go ahead and load the binary. And we're going to say, hey, you know what? Let's analyze this. Now, you can go ahead and mess around with any of the analyzers themselves. I typically just let them be default, um, but each one of these do have uh, different configuration options, so definitely something to uh, take a look at just to familiarize yourself with. And this is a very small binary, so analysis is going to be pretty quick, and I also left the debugging symbols in. Here we can see each section up in the program tree, which is going to be nice for just quick navigation for us. And then we also have a lovely defined strings. So we can scroll through there and see if there's anything of interest. Go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. And now let's go ahead and find our main function. So if we go ahead and look at the decompile view, this is exactly what we have in our C source code, right? It's a very simple program. Uh, it's not, not much left to the imagination here. Uh, we have our mprotect call, then we go ahead and try to execute the payload itself. And uh, we also see it referenced as payload. As we scroll down in the uh, actual disassembly view, we can go ahead and hover over the function calls themselves, and then we'll actually see it in a nice little code preview. And you can scroll on that if you just hover over the functions. And you see this uh, hex 7b here. So if we go ahead and we actually convert that really quick to decimal to 123, we see that this is actually the exact size of the payload that MSF Venom generated for us. So this is just, you know, showing some handy Ghidra things along the way for a quick analysis. And then also, hey, here's the payload that actually gets called. So when we look at this, 
this is our uh, byte array of uh, the actual shell code itself that's going to get executed. And we see uh, indexed at 0 up to 122 bytes. So let's go ahead and double click on this. And I'm going to minimize it so that way I can copy it. And once I open it up, oh, I messed up. And we're going to go ahead and do that one more time. And we can go ahead and actually just extract this bytes there. Or we can go to File and export the program. And you can specify how you want this exported. I want just the binary itself. And I'm just going to throw this into a standalone file just to show, hey, here's how you extract X number of bytes from Ghidra. So see, we have 123 bytes we extracted. So this is the actual shell code that MSF Venom generated for us. And I'm going to go ahead and split my Tmux window. And we'll do a hex dump really quick. And sure enough, if I pop up into my other pane and scroll up a little bit, we see 6A, 0A, 5, yep, there you go. Yep, so we just went ahead and quickly found the shell code. Again, simple runner, nothing crazy. I'm not trying to teach you how to reverse engineer here. I'm just trying to show some nice handy tricks with Ghidra. Uh, exported that so we could do with it what we want. We also can leverage the nice little bookmark feature uh, that Ghidra has here to say, hey, this is uh, a payload. And you know what? We found a payload. So that way, with more complex, larger binaries that you're you know, going to take more than five seconds to look at, you can uh, jump around to. And as I jumped around to the global offset table, you can double click on your bookmarks and then come right back. So that's the nice thing about bookmarks, um, opposed to just having like inline comments. So with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up, just something short and sweet. Uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more content.